So for those of you who follow me on Instagram, you'll be aware that I've recently been away on a 10 day, or actually 14 days away, but 10 day shoot. Now a 10 day shoot is pretty uncommon for me. Most of my shoots are between two and three days. So 10 days is a reasonably long shoot. Now I can't share anything about the job because it was work work rather than YouTube social media work. But what I can share with you is what I took with me for this job. Now, this was a reasonably large budget shoot. Um, we had a big crew, we had Digitex, assistants, stylists, set stylists, producers, and all the usual palaver that goes with it. But I'm gonna talk about the gear. So, the first thing is, I didn't take as much as you might think, and we shot a lot as well, but I shot on these. These are Canon 5DSRs, or 5DSs, I can't remember what they are. Um, so I took two of these with me in a little think tank roller case, and with it, I took my NP something video batteries because I dummy power these off those. We get a whole battery for like two days of shooting. But yeah, I chose to shoot on these. Most of the shooting we were doing was for like composite work. So we could get really close to the item and then build a 100 megapixel file afterwards. So 50 megapixels was ample. Two of them was plenty. I didn't rent my cameras because I don't like using cameras from rental houses. Because if any other photographer is anything like me, whenever something comes to my rental house, you absolutely rag it. Um, so yeah, I take my own camera body. So I took two of these with me, but I didn't take lenses. We rented a 24 to 70, 2.8 Mark II, 70 to 200, 2.8 Mark III, and 100 millimeter Canon Macro 2.8L. And I know what you're thinking, Scott, you don't like zooms. No, I don't. I didn't use them. They sat in the bag for the duration. Um, actually, we did use 70 to 200 at the start for a little bit, but... Apart from that, we sat with the 100mm Canon Macro, which was a great lens. I didn't have my Zeiss Milvus with me because I broke it the week before, so it was in the repair shop, which is very sad for me. Otherwise, I'd have probably taken that one with me and just rented the Canon zoom lenses because they were requested for us from the, from the client to be used. So there we go, this is what we took. Now, the only other real bit of camera camera kit I took is this. This is my Pro Nano. And this is a Nissi or Nicey polarizing filter. I took this and I took some gels to go with the lights so we could polarize light for some of the products we were shooting for them. This came out for an entire day, but it was only the one day we needed it. But yeah, this was a good bit of kit to have. So traveling light. Now in terms of tethering, we were tethering to my Mac mini, which is now behind me. I took that instead of my laptop because it's got USB-C ports. My laptop is old. I'm still waiting to replace it with one of the new Apple ones. Um, probably going for the 14 inch fully spec'd out version because I don't really want a 16 inch machine to carry around. But the MacBook mini did a great job. We're doing huge focus stacks. We were doing edits on the go, backups on the go. We shot directly to the one terabyte hard drive using this, which is not a tether tools cable, um, but it has, I'm not sure if you can see these, these little rectangle bits here and they let us put a power cable into it so we can power this 10 meter USB cable. We shot for two weeks on this and it didn't once lose connection. Um, now I bought these, and this sounds like some dodgy dealings from a guy in London whose mobile number I got. Doesn't have a website, you just have to know him and message him. Um, but yeah, these were great. So I picked up two more of these because my Digi bought one along, which is what we used. And then yeah, I, I purchased two off the guy who had them. Very good bit of kit. If I can find a way for you guys to get them, I'll let you know. Now we shot directly to my Mac M1 Mini and then we use these here. These are T5 SSDs. This is drive number two. This has actually still got the shoot on it because we've not used it since. We had drive one and drive two and we ran backups to both of these from the hard drive. Then back at my hotel room, I dropped this onto a big spinning disc. Um, and that was the backup system. Obviously the M1 Mini was running to Backblaze whilst we were there as well. The M1 Mini stayed at the studio overnight. One of these went home with me. The other one went home with the Digi. We had three copies at different locations. We were pretty much good to go. And then we were constantly uploading the selects to the Dropbox folder for the retoucher to get cracking on them whilst we were still shooting. Now everything else came from a rental house. So we rented, I think four Profoto D2 1000 watt heads with reflectors. Um, we used two or three of them most of the time, but we needed backup should we have popped one. Um, the lovely Digi and Assistant bought their own triggers for me so we could control them remotely moving around. And then we rented a large softbox and a load of C-stands, black cards, flags, scrims, nets, all of the usual sort of stuff that you might need. But all of my stuff fit into a wheelie case and it was a think tank airport. I even got my clothes in there as well. So I was traveling pretty light. The only other bit of kit I had with me for this job was my iPad. 
And that is because initially the client was going to be here. So we use this for capture pilot so they can see what's going on on the sheet. But in the end, I ended up using it to fire the camera whilst I was moving around. Um, because of the sort of work we were doing, we didn't really want to be touching the camera whilst we were shooting. But yeah, that's it. That's all we took on the shoot. It was a pretty streamlined affair for me. I managed to get on the train by myself without any assistance. Didn't need a tripod. We used a cam based stand at the studio. And yeah, it was great. And we used um, Howard Shooter's studio in Camden if you're looking for a nice food studio to spend a couple of weeks in. It's quite homely in there. So it was, it was a pleasant experience. Now, the reason for the renting of the kit was twofold. Uh, one was I don't own Profoto and we were specified that we had to use Profoto. This happens now and again. So we rented it. And the other was that even if I wasn't specified to use that, I had to shoot in London because people were flying over from the States. And I didn't want to take all of my Bron color kit down to London in a van because it's just a bit risky and it costs about the same as renting it. Renting kit is so cheap. Like renting a reflector costs like four pounds. We even went as far as renting an ISO monitor whilst we're down there, just so we had a good monitor to look at. And you know, we didn't have to take laptops and all the rest of it. We had a, just a little Mac Mini, which went in my case. It was a really simple and easy way to travel. And I'd thoroughly recommend doing it if you're traveling for work, rather than lugging loads and loads of kit, get a rental house to deliver it to you at nine in the morning. It will bang on time and everything was Pretty straightforward and easy going. Anyway, if you're enjoying these videos and you want to learn more about being a commercial photographer, do hit subscribe and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.